Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Chandres. I'm with American Immigration Group. And in today's webinar, we're going to talk a little bit about our company, what we do, our projects, and also the um, current state of the world, basically, the pandemic and how that has affected the uh, EB-5 space. Um, with me is our CEO and um, managing principal, Mr. David Finkelstein. He's also going to be talking a little bit about our company, um, what we do, and his own experience in the EB-5 um, space. So um, without further ado, we'll start. American Immigration Group, we are um, a regional center, an EB-5 regional center. We are headquartered in New York. Uh, with offices um, in Florida, um, here in the US, but then we have representations and offices in a lot of countries around the world, such as Hong Kong, China, Vietnam, Morocco, Egypt, and um, there's many more coming soon. Uh, we also have a representative office in Kuwait. Uh, so we're, we're pretty much global uh, in terms of uh, representations and offices that we have around the world. Um, we, as a regional center, are responsible for managing uh, the fund, basically the fund where you invest. Uh, we manage everything, all the facets of um, USCIS, basically. Uh, we do everything that has to be done uh, for you to get approved um, in terms of the project and in terms of the regional center um, responsibilities of it. Now. Um, we have been in business for quite a while now. Um, I think uh, Mr. Finkelstein is going to be best to speak about um, our experience. Uh, however, I do want to mention that um, we do work with the best in, in the business, being um, immigration attorneys that we use for our, uh, for our deals, be um, SEC attorneys. We do um, partner up with the best in the market, with people that have been um, involved in EB-5 since its inception in 1990s. So uh, without further ado, um, I'm going to turn this to uh, Mr. Finkelstein, um, our CEO and um, founder. Mr. Finkelstein, um, please tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got involved in EB-5 and um, what your experience has been so far. Everybody. My name is David Finkelstein. I'm the owner and founder of American Immigration Group. I started in business over three decades ago, maybe a little bit more, um, as an owner of a leather manufacturing business that was international. I ventured into real estate as a CFO and owner of a Florida company called Allied Capital and Development. We started two regional centers, Florida Regional Center and USIF Fund. Um, and I was instrumental in putting together over $700 million of EB-5 projects, worked on all the documentation with the immigration attorneys and the securities attorney, and moved on in 2013 together with my daughter and opened American Immigration Group. Collectively, my daughter and I have over 50 years of experience in real estate. We did real estate development as well in New York. Uh, and we continue to have the passion of EB-5 and have been involved in many different projects since we opened American Immigration Group, and we intend to continue this for quite a long time. My family as well is involved in it, my daughter Jacqueline uh, and grandchildren, and of course Chandris, uh, who will carry this forward for hopefully many, many years to come. Um, we try to bring on, bring projects that are safe, and that investors could comfortably invest in these projects and know they have a very good chance of not only getting their green cards and visas approved, but even more important that they will get their funds refunded back to them. 
we know in the EB-5 market, there's um, many regional centers today that have decided to go out of business. It's become a difficult area to be involved in, especially if you don't have the experience with good projects. Uh, you're not lucky enough to have locations that still remain the TEA. Our two major projects have the advantage of remaining in the TEA, which uh, Chandris will explain to you. And even more important, we have 924 uh, exemplar approval from USCIS, which will prevent any investor coming into these projects that they will be faced with any kind of, they will not get denied because of the project. So now I'd like to turn it over to Sean Brees. Um, I am next going to show you a short video about the EB-5 program, the regional center program, and uh, the steps you have to take as an investor to be part of this program. Uh, so here we go. EB-5 visa program. You've done well for yourself, and now you want to give your family the best chance for success and security in the United States. The United States EB-5 Investment Program allows you and your family to live, work, attend any school or university, and retire in the United States. You will be able to work and travel freely while having access to a world-class education and business opportunities. Every year, many individuals and families across the world apply to become U.S. residents by investing in qualified projects through government-approved and designated EB-5 regional centers, such as American Immigration Group. To qualify, you must invest a minimum of $900,000 U.S. dollars. This investment is used for projects that create at least 10 jobs in the United States. The first step is to contact AIG and we'll review the project offering materials with the help of our EB-5 experts. Second, you invest in one of AIG's regional centers projects. Third, you will file your immigration application with the U.S. Immigration and Citizenship Services. Upon approval, you and your family will be granted conditional permanent residency, also known as a green card. Within two years of your residency in the United States, we will file your petition to remove your condition. With a green card, you can build a better life for you and your family in the United States by investing in your future with American Immigration Group. Processing the I-526 is according to the retrogression of each country. So if you are from a country with no retrogression, basically, they'll look at your uh, application um, before uh, that of another person who is from a country that has, let's say, seven, eight years of retrogression. Uh, so this is good news um, because uh, basically people from countries without retrogression will get their approval uh, much quicker and uh, people from countries with retrogression will get their approval as uh, the date for the availability of, of the visa becomes, um, comes closer. Now, um, and another uh, thing I wanna mention in terms of um, the process, basically, I wanna talk to you a little bit about it. Um, the EB-5 program has a process for, for the investor to follow. Uh, we start with basically presenting a project to you as an investor. If you are interested um, in that um, project, what you do is you uh, sign something called a pre-subscription and you fill out a questionnaire. That questionnaire is a suitability questionnaire for us to see if you're suitable to make this investment according to SEC rules. Um, the pre-subscription also is for you to sign that uh, the documents, the uh, private documents that we share with you, you will not make them public because this is a private offering. Uh, once you sign that, we'll share all the offering documents with you, uh, all the related documentation. You'll be able to review that with your financial advisor or whomever else you feel that they're um, uh, capable of reviewing the, of the project with you. Uh, then you'll sign the signature pages on the offering memorandum once we sign them back, you are accepted into the project. You uh, wire the funds into the escrow account. And once the funds are wired into the escrow account, while all of this is happening, we highly suggest that our investors start working with an immigration attorney on their source of funds. The last piece of document your immigration attorney would need 
is proof that you have invested, which will come from the bank when you uh, wire the funds into the escrow account. So that approval goes in. Um, now I'm only talking about how long approvals uh, can take in general. Um, we don't know how long they're gonna take now after this, this rule of March 31st goes, uh, has gone into effect. Uh, but the approvals were taken um, anywhere from 17 to 49 months to be uh, approved. Um, our experience just recently has been 17 and a half months. Um, again, this is just the, 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 the few that we've got this year uh, approvals. Now, <clears throat> once your um, I-526 petition is approved, you're gonna go for an interview at your local consulate. You'll have your passport stamped and you'll have to enter the United States within six months two years after you enter the United States. So when you enter the United States, you are a conditional permanent resident. You have all the rights of any other permanent resident in the United States. However, you have a certain condition in your green card. And that condition states that in two years, uh, you have to prove that your $900,000 has created 10 jobs. Uh, and that's called the IA29 petition. So once you um, reach the two years, you and your attorney will file that petition, will provide proof that your money has um, created 10 jobs and those conditions will be removed. Five years from when you first enter the United States, um, as a conditional permanent resident, you are eligible to apply for a passport, but that's optional and it's up to you. Managing the risk, I'm gonna to speak to you a little bit about what we do at American Immigration Group to manage um, manage the risk. Um, so the risk of a project, right? So I'm gonna to speak to you briefly what the process that we go through uh, when we select a project. So projects come to us and they apply to us just like they do at a bank, they apply for a loan um, because our EB-5 is structured as a loan. So what we do is first, we basically analyze the background of everyone involved in the project. We uh, analyze the project financials, the assumptions that are provided by the developer. Uh, so we go through a quite long underwriting process. Uh, we engage third party companies to analyze the same stuff, but also we engage third party companies to provide market feasibility studies and market um, research um, to show that this project is both economically feasible and also marketable, and it will be successful once it's finished. Um, <clears throat> before we start the raise, we ideally want a project to be under construction, to have, to have all the financials in place. We don't like projects that depend on EB-5, right? We, uh, we want EB-5 to be the last piece. We want EB-5 to be um, um, a piece of financing that will replace a more expensive uh, financing that is already in the project. So we don't want the completion of the project to depend on EB-5. Um, so we report after basically we bring um, a project to the market, we um, report on the project to our investors periodically as well as USCIS. So you'll always be in the know, you'll have an account online well, you'll have access to all documentation and also updates that we will provide to you about the project in an ongoing basis. We're gonna talk now about our two current projects. So as of right now, we have two projects uh, in the market. Uh, one of them is called Banyan K. Um, Banyan K is uh, located in uh, West Palm Beach, Florida. Um, it's an area that sees more than 60 million visitors annually. Um, Palm Beach is basically um, home to the Professional <clears throat> Golf uh, Association, so the PGA um, is the center of the golf um, in the world, basically. Um, the market, um, West Palm Beach, Palm Beach is basically one of the wealthiest counties um, in Florida where many of uh, celebrities and high income individuals live. About 25% of the Forbes 400 wealthiest individuals uh, spend their winters uh, in Palm Beach. And this project, Banyan K, is about 10 minutes away from Mar-a-Lago of Trump. I don't know if that is a good thing or not, but um, that's where it is. Um, so this project has been under construction. 
um, with considerable parts of this project being already finished. And uh, this project also has a safe exit strategy um, because it has multiple streams of uh, revenue. Um, such as homes, selling the homes basically, operations from the hotel, the golf course, the clubhouse, and so on and so forth. Um, Banyan K uh, is basically a Hyatt resort. Um, the hotel is branded Hyatt, is being uh, developed by uh, Gencom, which is an international um, uh, developer in the hospitality um, industry. Um, so the resort will have uh, 94 single family homes. It will have 51 custom home residences, 24 luxury villas, a condominium tower, um, 150 room hotel, uh, Hyatt Hotel, 130 acres of golf course by Jack Nicholas that's already been built. The hotel is under construction. A new clubhouse that's complete. A tennis center, which is under construction right now. Um, and of course, the hotel amenities are on the other side. It will have everything that a luxurious high-end hotel um, has. Um, another thing I want to mention to you about Banyan K is that as of August of last year, it has created um, about 875 jobs. These jobs go into inv inventory and are used um, by our investors as they come in. Uh, now, job creation has been a risk in the market. There have been a couple of projects that have had to, um, basically after the two year conditional uh, period, have had to tell their investors that, oh, sorry, we could not create their, uh, the uh, sufficient jobs uh, for you. So um, that is something that we work very hard here at American Immigration Group to um, not have happened. So we always try to have jobs created prior to um, accepting an investor into, into the project. Um, now, this is basically a map of the whole project. It's 250 acres, uh, 130 acre golf course that you see on both sides here with 18 holes. It's a Jack Nicholas uh, golf course. Uh, Jack Nicholas is very well known around the world. Um, as a golf player and as a golf course designer. You have um, the, the 200 condo uh, unit pad where the condo is gonna go, a clubhouse, the hotel, the villas, the tennis center. And um, so this is basically the master, master project. Um, these are renderings of how the hotel is gonna look inside. At the bottom you have how the hotel is going to look outside and the clubhouse. And these are renderings of the homes, um, the different kinds of homes that um, are being offered at Banyan K. I'm going to play a short video uh, for you uh, to see where Banyan K is um, as of right now. <laughs> Oh, 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 
As you can see uh, from the video, the golf course has been completed. It's been operational since November of 2017. The club, clubhouse um, is completed. The hotel is under construction. So um, considerable parts of this project have already been completed. Um, I'm going to go through a few things that we uh, see from the market that Ben and Kay has that are competitive. Um, advantages to other projects in the market. Um, the TEA is really very important. Uh, it is very, very, right, very rare right now to see in the market that a project is both a TEA designated and it has a 924 uh, approval. So Banning K has both. Our both projects have both. Um, basically about 70% of all the projects that have been in the markets um, don't have a TEA designation anymore. So they are at $1.8 million. And projects that are coming with a TEA are new projects that do not have an approval or that do not have all the uh, financing in place. So they're, they're new projects. They're, they're projects that, you're just, that are just starting. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, jobs have already been created. Um, as of August of last year, 875 jobs. Um, it's already generating income. The golf course has been finished. It has all the members that it wants to accept. Uh, of course, they don't want it to be crowded, so it's quite a, 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 an exclusive type of membership. Um, and um, this whole um, resort is, being, is going to be managed and branded um, as Hyatt, which is an internationally known brand um, that, that gives a lot to, to, to the project. Um, our next project is called Kingsbridge uh, National Ice Center. Kingsbridge is a project that is located in the Bronx, a borough of New York. It is about 27 minutes away from Mid Midtown Manhattan, about 10 minutes away from the Yankee Stadium. Uh, it's five minutes drive to the interstate at 87 and 95. And it is located um, in, in, in a place where there is a lot of nearby schools uh, for the university and so on and so forth. In terms of the market, uh, compared to any other uh, major market in the country, New York is really the most underserved in terms of available ice time. Um, only seven ice surfaces currently exist in New York, right? Uh, and um, based on the industry benchmarks, New York could support an additional 77 rings of ice. Um, the team that is involved with this Kingsbridge National Ice Center um, um, is really uh, second to none, right? So Kingsbridge, as uh, a project, is going to be the biggest, uh, the biggest ice center in the world. Uh, it's going to have nine ice sheets, um, which basically makes it the biggest in the world. Um, and uh, is being developed, this whole thing started by Mark Messier. Um, he is considered to be the best hockey player of all time. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about the project, uh, we have a video where you get to hear from Marc Messier, the development team, and you get to see the design and, and what the project is about. I just want to mention that um, Kilbane Development is also um, a developer and Kilbane is a builder of, of this project. And um, basically Kilbane is one of the biggest um, construction company in, in the United States. Uh, the Kingsbridge structure as a structure is a landmark is a, considered a historical landmark. And as such, it has received a lot of support by both New York City and uh, New York State. Um, what the Kingsbridge National Life Center is going to have, basically, uh, the main arena of Kingsbridge is going to have a 5,500 seat, um, basically, uh, state-of-the-art arena um, that is going to be surrounded by um, eight other 
um, NHL Olympic sized um, rinks. Um, this arena is going to also be used um, for concerts and other events. It is, um, it, it is um, expected to host at least 160 events annually. Um, so think of it, think of this arena being used kind of like Madison Square Garden type of, uh, type of a thing. Uh, you have a community center of 50,000 square feet. You have a um, wellness and training center, a dressing room, uh, nine ice streets, as I mentioned, making it the largest ice, centers, uh, ice sports center in the world. Um, On-site parking, storage rooms, shops, um, destination retail, training facility, a clubhouse, coffee shops, restaurants, and you're gonna see all of this in, in, in the video that I'm going to play to you shortly. This is how Kingsbridge is going to, um, it looks right now, basically, um, because the structure is there, um, but this is uh, uh, Kingsbridge. It also has its own train stop called Kingsbridge on the four line um, that takes 27 minutes basically from Midtown Manhattan to, to, uh, to this uh, project. So um, I'm going to play a video for you. You'll get a chance to hear from the developers um, and from the entire team that is involved in this project. Back in 1994, when I was a part of a team in, in New York that won the Stanley Cup with the New York Rangers, I think that cup run really transcended the game. It got a lot of people interested in hockey. It got a lot of kids interested in hockey. Only to turn around and, and realize that it wasn't easy to play hockey in the metro area. set on a journey to figure out a way how we could alleviate some of the pressure on the lack of ice. When we went to see the armory, it was a wow moment for all of us. We're gonna be able to create opportunity where opportunity hasn't been there in the past. You see is you get off the subway platform you have this massive fortress that's just sitting in front of you the exterior of the building is in a romanesque style so it's just a beautiful example of the height of architecture when they were still using brick and mortar it's a fantastic beautiful structure it's about 27 minutes from midtown on the four train it's accessible from the east side from the west side it's near interstate highways it's near major commuter railway lines we got the architects to go in and they quickly calculated that we could put nine sheets of ice inside the existing building, which would make us the world's largest indoor ice facility. If you want to be the biggest and best of anything, um, it takes a very skilled and competent team. The design and development teams are uh, best in class. We have Gilbank Construction, STV, BBB Architecture. They are the premier builders and designers of, uh, of arenas and uh, more specifically ice sports facilities in the United States. There's no team better qualified to bring this project to the market. This is built like a fortress. It is so solid. It is so well built. It is quite incredible. For well over 25 years, the firm has been dedicated to ice sport facilities, both training and recreation and spectator facilities. We have done more restorations, renovations of major ice sport facilities than anybody else in the world that we know of. One of our most famous restorations, transformations, was Madison Square Garden. At Kingsbridge, one of the other things we're doing, which is again unique, never been done before uh, in the world, is we're putting four of the rinks suspended above five of the rinks below. We've created a major east-west promenade, over 600 foot long, with cafes on it, with retail on it, shops to go along on one side, and then all of the ice rinks on the other. We think it's totally unique. There's nothing else even close to this in the world. Gilbane is the largest family-owned construction company in the United States. Gilbane built the 1980 Winter Olympics in Lake Placid, New York. 
We've also built the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. On the professional level, we built the home for the New Jersey Devils, the Prudential Center. We've also built the Dunkin' Donuts Center in Providence, Rhode Island, where the P. Bruins play. Gilbane is the best company to build the Kingsbridge Project. New York City's buildings have a deep cultural history. We are thrilled to be able to contribute over 6,000 new jobs to the Northwest Bronx with the creation of the Kingsbridge Project. So I think at the core of EB-5 is offering uh, foreign nationals access, frankly, to the American dream, offering them access to a path towards permanent residency. And I think there's a really nice symmetry with the Kingsbridge Project in that at the core of our corporate purpose is to create opportunity. Check all the boxes uh, for EB-5 and especially with the unemployment rate in the Bronx, uh, we feel this is a perfect uh, project. The Armory it, is huge for us and it, what it does is allows for us to create jobs, paying a living wage, it allows for our kids to be introduced to new sports and give them more opportunities and it will help us to rebrand the Bronx. So for anyone who's supportive of the Armory, I really want to say thank you and welcome. The Armory to us will be the biggest convener of local sports, international sports, and just as importantly, the biggest incentivizer of health and training in the United States, if not the world. Really excited to create an organization of Kingsbridge uh, Youth Hockey and to uh, really inspire these kids to get on the ice and, and understand uh, what it means to be on a team, what it takes to be on a team. Where else other than New York City would you want the best and the biggest of anything? And the Armory will provide us with the world's largest indoor ice facility. Kingsbridge roll off people's tongues, just like Yankee Stadium, Bronx Zoo, Botanical Garden. The idea of having people from around the world coming into the neighborhood to train, to use the facility for general skate, to view a, a concert or a programming at the 5,000 seat center ice arena, and, and those activities creating an economic driver in a way that's responsible development with shared value and opportunity for those in the neighborhood as well. That to me feels like a responsible development that, um, that I'm, I'm proud to be associated with. Um, so I think you get the under, you get to understand a little about about the project the um, the overall uh, what what this project is and what um, what is going to be um, the most important thing about this project and uh, that could interest EB five investors is that it has a full um, government support so the support comes not only um, you know them going there and saying we support this project uh, but also financially so the new york state has guaranteed to uh, refinance the construction loan of 138 million dollars so that senior loan basically is going to be repaid uh by the new york state uh upon substantial completion of the project so um, that that's that's that really minimizes the risk of the eb5 investor going in after the senior loan uh into the project um, as I have mentioned before, this project as well has the I-924 approval from USCIS, and it's also a TEA-designated um, project. Um, this uh, project, um, it has a safe exit strategy because it has stable uh, revenue. Um, and, um, what that means is that, or how we get to that conclusion is because we see uh, we have seen basically schools and different educational organizations already committing to um, ice time uh, to rent once the, the Kingsbridge is opened. About 94% of all external available ice time has been uh, basically um, um, requested uh, from these um, letters of intent. Um, another strong point of this project is that it has a really strong developer. Uh, a very well-known uh, developer such as Gilbane and also um, a famous ice sports star such as Marc Messier um, that's going to be involved in the project management and will support operations. Um, so this project is not only creating an ice sports um, venue, right? It's also creating event and concert space 
but is also providing athletic and educational opportunities uh, for youth uh, that promotes um, a lot of economical development. So uh, there, there is a lot of good things um, about this project. There, there, there is a lot of interest in this project. There, there's been a lot of media attention in this project. So it's quite famous. Um, and um, we welcome any questions about it um, by the end of, of, of this presentation. Now we're going to speak a little bit about the EB-5 investments during the pandemic. Um, as we have all seen, markets around the world have reacted to the global pandemic. It has taken a huge toll on investments. Um, you know, um, stock indexes were, were, have dropped around the world. GDP has uh, been lowered around the world. Uh, but the one thing that um, basically kind of remains uh, um, a constant is that people do continue to invest in real estate. So um, investors that have liquid capital um, are looking for more valuable opportunities. So they, they've shifted their uh, focus on a traditional assets. Traditionally, um, traditionally um, um, real estate has been uh, an investment favorite for, for people. Um, according to Gallup's annual economy and finance survey that was conducted on uh, April uh, 1st through the 14th, the real estate's popularity has surged. It has been a favorite investment since 2003 and one of the top investments since 2016, even through um, the pandemic. Now, um, why invest in, in EB-5? Now, while this whole real estate investment boost can be positive for the EB-5 industry because most of EB-5 projects are real estate uh, projects, uh, we understand it's too soon to, to, to understand the full impact this pandemic is going to have in any industry, really. Uh, but it is not early for sophisticated EB-5 investors to understand which economies and which asset classes are more stable, are more resilient, are more reliable, and are more likely to survive uh, future uh, pandemics or other economical downturns. Um, the U.S. remains a go-to market for investors, uh, both investors that are looking for value creation and investors that are looking for another citizenship option. Um, basically, investors historically have uh, allocated capital into the U.S. real estate uh, when times were tough. Um, there is two major factors, and, and this comes from speaking to other CBI, so citizenship by investment uh, uh, programs, uh, around the world, be it Canada, be it um, Grenada, they all seem to report the same thing. There is a higher interest from people on obtaining a secondary passport. Um, and there is two major facts or factors that are driving this, right? Uh, the first is fear of political instability. Now, we all know that when um, economies go down, there is a lot of unrest and political instability. So a lot of people have realized that they do need that second option, uh, that, that, that second option for themselves and for, for, for their children, but also is the fear of losing their financial capital due to inflation or other economic downturns um, that could happen in their own countries. Um, these two factors, um, reinforced by positive government support uh, to businesses and individuals, um, like the United States has done, uh, has encouraged, have encouraged investors to pursue safer grounds, basically, and have encouraged investors to consider the United States as their primary, um, uh, basically, as, as a country they would really like to, uh, to become citizens of, um, or, or at least have that other option um, uh, for, for, for their family. Um, United States is a place where a lot of people um, come to, to sustain and to create new wealth and also to secure a better future for, for, for their children. Um, so uh, this pandemic has interrupted a lot uh, in, in, in daily operations in a lot of businesses and immigration is not no, no different from it. A lot of embassies have been closed, a lot of consulates have been closed, so a lot of people uh, have not been able to obtain visas or any um, uh, like that um, but it also has affected 
um, uh, or has influenced immigration policies. On April 21st, we saw President Trump sign an executive order, basically, uh, where he prevented um, immigrants um, who w would pose a risk to the U.S. labor to enter uh, the United States. So a lot of visas have been uh, basically canceled during this time um, uh, through uh, this executive order. However, EB-5 has not been affected. Um, L-1 has, H-1B has, EB-5 and E-2 particularly have not been affected. Uh, so EB-5 investors are considered uh, investors that create jobs, that uh, help the economy. So uh, this goes to show that uh, no matter what uh, an administration um, thinks about immigration as a whole, EB-5 kind of stands aside from all of that and it's considered as a different type of a category. So you're not coming to take anyone's job, you're not coming to um, to basically um, stay here or, or become um, um, dependent on, on, on help from the government. You're coming here, you're investing, uh, you're, you're basically um, helping the U.S. economy, you, you're, you're, you're um, creating jobs for U.S. citizens. So um, EB-5 has always been, and I, we believe will continue to be a favorable, of, of, um, favorable by the U.S. government, no matter who comes uh, into office. So um, basically, no, nothing has been affected by uh, the Trump's executive order in terms of EB-5. Uh, the petitions continue to, to, be, uh, to be submitted. They continue to be processed. Um, and basically, uh, had the only uh, thing that, that has happened with this um, executive order that is that it has increased an in interest in EB-5. So uh, someone who would do H-1B or an EB-2 or an EB-3 um, now uh, is looking at EB-5 as a more doable option. Uh, EB-5 is simple. It is the easiest way for you to gain um, a, a U.S. permanent residency. Uh, it's very straightforward. Um, you invest uh, in, in, in a job created entity and basically you get your green card. Now, the only thing that you have to be mindful of is your source of funds. And that is something that you have to work with your immigration attorney and you have to be very careful about it. In terms of our projects, if you invest in our projects, they both have exemplar approval, which means that your green card will not be denied because of our project. Um, so you want to be mindful of your source of funds and, and um, work closely with your attorney. Um, this has been all uh, as a presentation from us. Uh, we are here to take any questions that you might have. Uh, so please feel free. All right, um, we have received a couple of questions uh, before the start. So I'm gonna go ahead and answer those questions. Um, hold on one second. The first question is, what are any new changes taking place in the EB-5 program. The changes have already taken place in um, 2019, and we don't think there is more changes coming. However, the 2019 guidelines have said the one thing that EB-5 price will go up every five years or so to adjust to inflation. So that's the only thing that I see coming. Uh, whatever changes there were to make, those were made in November 21st of last year, and there is no more changes that we see coming. The second question is, can the EB-5 program be fast-tracked during the pandemic? The whole fast-tracked thing is, if you're referring to one particular project being approved for a fast-track or anything like that, uh, that is very dependent uh, on the individual. So the project as a project, we looked into a fast track uh, project approval for Kingsbridge. It is the biggest 
eye center in the world, so it is in the national interest as per USCIS guidelines. However, uh, you cannot receive an approval that would be a, a blanket for all investors, such as the I-924 is. Each investor will be considered in an individual basis on the urgency of them receiving the I-526 faster uh, than the rest. So it, it doesn't really um, apply the fast tracking. So I would say no, um, everything is being processed normally. Everything a bit slower, the pandemic, the close down has caused that, that delay, but I don't see the, anything being fast tracked unless the government comes out with some sort of a rule where they say, we're gonna fast track EB-5 to increase investments. The next question is, what happens if the country of application becomes sanctioned or banned? Do we get a refund? Yes, you would get a refund if it becomes banned and if the government says, we're not gonna approve any type of immigration petitions from this particular country. You do get a refund. Next question is, we're waiting to sell our property. Can the regional center take this as a holding payment to start the process? It depends on the project, but yes, generally we can. If you can provide a, a document from your bank or from the country where uh, the bank is basically telling, well, if you have a mortgage basically, or if you can send us documents that you own the house and prove that the house is in the market or uh, anything that basically we would have to do this together with your immigration attorney because what happens is this is not a problem with us however USCIS wants to know that you have invested the funds right so you can make a commitment usually is about four months um, a four-month commitment and we can send the document, we can accept it as a regional center, send the documentation with your immigration attorney, but it depends on USCIS if they accept uh, what you have provided as enough uh, to consider it as an investment that has been made. So we have to work closely with your immigration attorney and with our SEC attorney to come up with that. But yes, we have done it in the past. It is something that we do. Um, the next question is, how can we view projects due to tra travel bans and COVID-19? Well, there is a lot of ways you can, you can basically, how do I say this? What you want is proof that the project is there, I'm assuming. So I'm assuming you want to know that the project is where the regional center is telling you it is both in construction or location or whatnot. The best way to do it is by, I guess, videos. We do drone videos of our projects, especially Banyan K that has been under construction. So you can kind of see in our website where the project is. You can Google it and research it and look for more information. Like for example, if you go to the West Palm Beach County uh, website, you can see that the project is there and all the per permits that they have received. This is public information. Same thing with both Kingsbridge. Kingsbridge is there, has been there. You can basically verify its existence uh, through other sources that don't necessarily have to be us. Um, and you can always ask us questions um, and, and we're gonna try to, to answer them at, at best of our, our abilities right now. We are all kind of have all hands tied at the moment in terms of traveling. So it is a bit tougher, but um, there is other ways that you can verify that the project is there and it's being constructed and so on and so forth. There is another question that says, who are the attorneys? So if you're talking about us as a regional center, who do we use as attorneys? Um, we use transactional att attorneys. We use an SEC attorney, Andrew Kingston. He's a Harvard um, graduate. We use um, Wolsdorf. We also have a good relationship with Herson, with um, Mark Davis and Associates. So basically the, the biggest player in the, in, players in the industry that have been doing EB-5 since its inception, we work with them. If you're talking about who the attorney is going to be that's going to prepare your petition, first, that is up to you who you select. 
Uh, second, we do refer you. We can introduce you to different attorneys, and, uh, but if you have your own attorney, feel free. Uh, it's up to you. <clears throat> what is the time to get money back and return on investment? Uh, our loans are usually five years with the possibility of being extended twice for a year each. So a total of seven years. This, in our experience, doesn't really happen unless um, there, there is some sort of, of, of a desire for, um, for a longer term loan that will also be in, uh, increased in pricing. So it will become more expensive for the developer and uh, it, it will have more return for you as an investor as it, it passes the five-year mark. So it could be six, it could be seven, but usually we see five. How many investors has fi have filed for the Kingsbridge project? We do not have any investors for the Kingsbridge project. Kingsbridge is very new. Um, we just came to the market with it. So it's, it, it, it has been uh, a project that we have worked on and we have tried to develop for quite a while. However, uh, it has not been in the market. So it's just coming up in the market uh, now and we don't have any investors in it. We do have investors in Banyan K. Do you help in mandamus action? Now that depends. That depends on um, the time. Have you passed basically the, the timeline that USAIS has given you? Uh, usually after 32 months, you should definitely consider um, maybe filing for a mandamus. Um, we've seen people do that. This is between you and your immigration attorney. The mandamus is filed by your immigration attorney, so it usually doesn't really have anything to do with us. However, um, it depends on your particular circumstances. Once you become our investor, we are gonna be in touch with you at all times. You'll have our contact information, so we can talk about this, we can look at the time, we can also talk with the immigration attorney and see if it makes sense for you to file a mandamus at a particular time that you wanna file it, and we can definitely discuss that further. It depends on the circumstances. It, it really does. Does this project have an E2 option? No, it does not. Um, for as much as people try to, to say that E2 could be a solution like an EB-5 or a lot of people could go on the same project, it cannot. E2 is a, a visa that we help with as well but it is a visa that you have to make an investment, you have to open a business, you have to manage that business, you have to be involved in that business in order to maintain an E2 visa. These projects, you're not involved in the day-to-day -day activities of the projects, you're not working there, you, know, you don't have to show time, so um, it's a completely different type of thing, so no. Um, an E2 visa is, you can open a franchise, for example, you can open a restaurant or whatnot, it's not EB-5. It doesn't, E-2 doesn't give you a green card, EB-5 does. So there, there is a difference and E-2 is considered a different type of an investment. Let's see, we have some Q&As here. Do you have an office in Cape Town and who is your local attorney? We do not have an office in Cape Town. No, um, we do have an office in West Palm Beach and in New York. Um, local attorneys, again, we are, we have good relationships with a lot of uh, immigration attorneys. So we can refer to you, to you an immigration attorney who is in the location, or if you have or know one, uh, you can introduce them to us so we can work together on your petition. Uh, this is a close, you have to create a close relationship with regional center, immigration attorney and investor in order for this to be successful. So we're open to your own immigration attorneys. We can refer you to immigration attorneys, but to answer your question directly, we do not have an office in Cape Town. Um, is the I-924 based on the old rules or new rules? When was it approved? It, so we have two projects. The I-94 is the I-94. There is no new rules for the I-94 approval. So it's the exemplar approval. They look at the project, they look at the job creation, and they say, okay, yes, this is good. 
Now you have a TEA when you first apply and they approve it based on that TEA. TEA guidelines ha have changed. We have <clears throat> obtained um, an approval for a TEA, for an updated TEA with the guidelines that are already in place now. And we have sent that to USCIS. So we are TEA, therefore the exemplar does not get affected by the guidelines. It is the same, the guidelines are the same. The TEA is what changed. What level is the EB-5 Capital and Hyatt Resort? Is it at the bottom and what is the funds going to be used for? So the funds, the EB-5 funds are always used for construction or applied to construction in order to get the job creation. Um, most of the job creation comes from direct jobs or basically construction, the dollar amounts um, spent on a particular, um, particular activity. Um, the EB-5 is not going to be at the bottom, it's going to be right after the senior loan. And then you have the developer equity, with, which is about $68 million or so. So you are ahead of that, uh, but behind the senior lender. You're, we are a MES loan, so that's, that's what EB-5 generally is. Or it's an equity. When you are going in as an equity investment, then you are at the bottom of it. Can you please simplify what AIG, AIG will do for me in terms of services as an investor and what I have to do solo or with the aid of others? So first and foremost, AIG finds a project that is qualified for EB-5. You can't just invest funds in any project and then claim, all right, I'm gonna do EB-5 for this. Uh, the project has to be uh, qualified for EB-5. So. With AIG, what you're doing is you're not only investing in a project that is qualified for EB-5, but that has been approved by USCIS as a good EB-5 project. So that's the main thing we do, one. Two, what we do is think of a, a fund, right? You invest in a fund and then there is a fund manager that manages that fund uh, for you. You're not involved in the day-to-day -day activities of that fund. You're not um, a decision maker on that fund, right? You know generally where what the strategy is and where those funds are gonna go, um, but you don't get involved in day-to-day -day activities of that fund, unless there is big changes. Then is when you would have to be asked. The same is with the EB-5. EB-5 is a private um, offering and it is an equity fund, right? The only difference is that we uh, disperse that investment as a loan for security reasons. A loan is much more secured than an equity. So what we do is we find the project, we make sure the project qualifies, we hire third party um, companies to make sure the, the project is a good investment opportunity. Um, we basically then get an approval by USCIS. Uh, so we handle the project side. What you can do with the help of others and what you need to do with the help of others is do your source of funds. So you talk to an immigration attorney, they will tell you what kind of documentation they need to prove that you have earned those funds that you're investing legally. And that is what your focus should be in terms of the project, the project approval, uh, project success. That is what we manage. Um, another thing that is worth mentioning here is that our primary uh, interest is our investors. We have no affiliation with a project, right? A project has to answer to us. We look after our investors' um, interests, not the project. We're not affiliated with them. We're like a bank giving them a loan. Uh, there is a lot of projects out there where the regional center is the developer as well. And that is a conflict of interest because of course they will look after the interests of the project before they look after the interests of, of the investors. We're not that. We are just like the fund, what we want, uh, what our interest is to manage that fund successfully, to get that project, to create the jobs necessary for you to get your green card uh, conditions removed and to get the money back for you at the end of the long term. I'm sorry, I didn't really understand the answer provided related to my question about the I-924 approval. So the Palm Beach was approved before the EB-5 chance. Both projects, the exemplars, see an exemplar takes about two to three years to be approved, right? So um, we have filed quite early uh, for these projects before we put them into the market. Uh, the Palm Beach project has been approved, I believe, November of 2018. Uh, it has had the exemplar approved. Now, what I'm trying to explain to you is that the changes that happened in November 21st of 2019 
are not changes that affect the approval or the exemplar approval. The only changes that have happened is are on the TEA designation. The, if the, if a, lo a location had been prior before basically um, considered a TEA, a lot of those locations have lost their TEA after the November 21st guidelines. Once you lost the TEA, let's say you is not approved anymore it just means that your project now is a non-TEA and you'll have to pay 1.8 million dollars to go into that project and not 900,000 that's the only thing that has changed and the old rules are different from the new rules I'm assuming so if one was approved last year doesn't mean it will be approved under the new rule. no um, no 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 it, that's not okay if one was approved last year, you mean if a project was approved last year or if an individual was approved last year? If you're talking about an individual being approved that last year, that individual is approved, is good to go. No one is gonna go back and say, oh, you're not approved anymore. Um, in terms of, why am I not seeing these, hold on. In terms of the project, if you're telling me a project was approved last year and the changes don't do anything to its approval, that is correct. They don't do anything to, their, to, to, to its approval. What they do is they change the amount you can invest into that project. If an, a project has an exemplar approval, it has an exemplar approval. Unless material changes happen to that project that has nothing to do with USCIS. However, you would file to USCIS, you would tell them that those material changes have happened if something is material enough, such as, I don't know, changing the location or changing the, the type of business a project is gonna do. So you said it's a hotel, now it's gonna be a factory. That's a problem, you do lose the, the approval. But if you're staying within the project, the way, same way you filed it, that doesn't affect, the changes do not affect that approval. They affect the TEA. The TEA will decide if it will determine if you invest 900,000 or 1.8 million dollars. That's the only difference. The golf course was completed in 2017. I'm guessing it is not part of our investment, right? No, it is part of our uh, of the EB5 investment. The 130 acres of the golf course, the hotel, the 51 um, uh, estate homes, and the 24 villa homes are part of the investment of the EB-5 investment. They continue to be part of the EB-5 investment. Uh, what's not part are the 94 lots. At the end, those 94 lots are gonna be sold. The, the uh, developer has a joint venture type of agreement with, uh, with the developer of those lots. Um, they sold the lots to the developer and now they have a profit sharing type of an agreement with them. Those are not part of our EB-5 collateral. Also, the condo pad is not part of our EB-5 collateral. However, it is part of the master project. The EB-5 collateral has the 130 acres of uh, golf course, the hotel, clubhouse, tennis court, and the 51 uh, estate homes and 24 um, golf villas. As I said before, you can, I guess, contact us. Um, the contact information will be displayed shortly, so you can get my email. Um, and, and just email me for any questions that you might have. Thank you for participating and please uh, feel free to contact us if you have any, any more questions, okay?